I think we're at an interesting moment now. Um, five years ago, sometimes even maybe three years ago, we were making guesses about what would work with the internet, what would work with new media, where the world was headed. But there was a lot of um, speculation and a lot of skepticism. I remember the early meetings when we talked about that Wikipedia was a legitimate competitor to our ancient trusted institutions. That was a real debate and there was a lot of dismissal. You know, how can a bunch of people working on a wiki ever create anything useful? That debate's over now. Um, there was debate and skepticism that mobile would be a factor in people's daily lives. That debate's over now. <laughs> there was a, a debate that citizens, that individuals working independently without central coordination could do meaningful work in society. Last time I checked, uh, the Zooniverse crowdsourcing website had over 800,000 active participants. Um, Ted has had a billion video views. Uh, if I look at any big problem in the world, I can see where citizens working in extraordinary new ways using the simple tools of the internet can accomplish that work. So the moment we're in now is, is it's, there are two bets that our colleagues need to place. How can we take advantage of the things, the aspects of digital culture that are rock solid and bankable now? Basic execution of digital fundamentals. And then how, how, when, with what urgency can we transition the way we think about our jobs from what I've been calling the broadcast model, where we, the experts, we decide what problems will be solved, we decide how to solve them, we build the solutions, and we deliver them to a passive audience. How and when will we transition from that model to the model where citizens really are our co-creators? That's the challenge. And, and it's not about cosmetic differences, it's not about having a blog, or having Twitter. It's fundamentally about how to scale our impact in society um, using the right tools to get our jobs done now. And I think that impact can be dramatically stronger than it's ever been. Um, this is a moment in our place on Earth as a species when we really need learning institutions and memory institutions to do an excellent job absolutely breathtakingly excellent job. And it's no longer acceptable to me to only prosecute that mission by hanging pictures on walls, inviting people into buildings. That's okay. We still need to do that. But we also need to do the other thing. Not a year from now, not three years from now. Now. So those are very lofty ideas. Where it becomes very practical is how you insert these big ideas into the daily work of museums. So think, think of a timeline of a typical museum project. Some group of individuals gets an idea in their head, we're going to do an exhibition, we're going to do a publication, we're going to do an educational program. And when that idea crystallizes, our institutions and the individuals in them carry, carry into that moment their training and their biases about what success looks like and what is possible. And what I'm asking, what all of us are trying to ask our colleagues to do and our institutions to do is to, is to stop at that moment and rethink what is possible. Um, there's a, a moment of opportunity when we can have a much bigger dream about what can be accomplished and how quickly it can get done. So the old way was to have an idea, to put our heads down, practice our, our crafts of scholarship and design for two, three, five, ten years sometimes, and then come up for air and share what we know. From what I've observed about how successful, humanistic, enlightenment activities are being done on the web. This moment 
can be much more powerful if immediately the organization thinks globally, thinks internet by default, and thinks open. Um, these ideas I'm borrowing from, stealing from, adapting from the great thinkers who've been writing about this for more than a decade, um, both Chris Anderson's, Chris Anderson of TED and Chris Anderson of Wired, uh, Clay Shirky, David Weinberger, Tim O'Reilly wrote What is Web 2.0 in 2005, still incredibly valid and, and pertinent. Um, work globally, global by default, open by default, web by default. Um, when we developed the Smithsonian's Web and New Media Strategy in 2008, 2009, Instead of having that be an internal, committee-driven process, much like we would do an exhibition or a publication, we chose to immediately take it to a public-facing wiki. Every conversation we had internally was wiki-cast, live. Um, we recognized that we didn't have the expertise, even at the Smithsonian, which is the largest museum and research complex in the world, we didn't have the expertise to to say the last word about education in the digital age, curation in the digital age. We worked open, we worked quickly, we set up the project so that it could evolve. The actual strategy is the wiki. If you and I want to change it today, we can go in and edit it, make comments, suggestions. And that fast and open process let us do something that would normally take two or three years, hundreds of committee meetings. Let us do that in six weeks. That process seems to be replicable to almost every aspect of what museums do. But we have to give up control. We have to give up the illusion of control and substitute that for honesty and integrity.